your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment with La Impresaria, La. the author, the Forbes list, ever, Lacia Taylor. That makes me feel so amazing. She's on. Like, you, I feel it. It's you are good. amazing. That's why it feels amazing. Today, viewers, I want to say thank you to all my fans, all my subscribers. We have a guest speaker today. We're going to be talking about how to self publish how to be an author and how to be successful in the game in 2018 and beyond right so as he said i'm the la empresaria the businesswoman and my favorite thing to do is write and self-publish my books i'm three books in but i still have much to learn but i want to share with you guys what i've have learned so far so there's 11 steps so the first step is first before anything is to decide what you want to write about because you can't write if you don't know what you want to write about so that's why i say to create an outline of what you want to write about so my thing with well, my first book mm -hmm. thriving too is i wanted to do a motivational book about all the tools that i learned from moving to florida to la and figuring out what is my purpose in life so that was my thing of, okay create the outline of the different tools that i learned and each tool served as a chapter so that was my outline so when i was writing i knew that okay in this first chapter, these are the things and components, antidotes that goes into this chapter because mm -hmm. this is that tool. And so anything that falls on that goes in that chapter. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. The thriving tools here, this is your guide to success. This is your guide to how to thrive. Right. Is this on sale on Amazon? Because we need to On we sale, need the just look up my name, Evelicia, spelled E-V-E-R-L-E-C-I-A. We got it here, Evelicia Taylor. We are going to support the sister. We want to buy on Amazon. But what are some, what's the difference between thriving and just living? I mean, what's a tool? Is a tool something to, something to move? Well, how'd you decide on the title? Is it, is it something that you solve, that you, 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 you break down, build up? I mean, a tool has a definition, but why'd you choose thriving tool as a title? Because I feel that most people in life just simply survive. They just go with the mm. motions and deal with what's dealt with them in life. But I feel like thriving is when you just go to another level and you reach and you accomplish things that you never imagined that you could accomplish. So mm. that's why it's called thriving tool. And it's basically all the tools and advice, insights, anecdotes that I feel I wish someone would have shared with me when I first got off the plane and stepped here in Los Angeles. Wow. Even in, in, in high school, I feel like these are the tools that, that would have put me on a better journey. Like find out what you love, watch the company you keep. We are, you are the circle that you keep. So those things. Heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. Okay, so real quick question. I want to just say this background. Mm -hmm. I actually met you because you were watching some YouTube videos, right. learning Espanol. That's why she's La Empresaria. And we met, I think we were in Kenneton in LA, Kenneton Park, and we talked, and that's how we're here today. But my question to you is, how can I decide? Sometimes making a decision, decision is like, a civil war going on inside you. You want to write about this, but then you want to write about that. How can you just make the decision, be definite, and go after it? How can you conquer step number one of your 11 steps? I feel that the first step is just simply pull out your computer, pull out your longhand notebook, and just write and, and allow it to go wherever it decides to go. Because sometimes when I'm writing, I, I'm working on another book right now. So I started that book, and it ended up going in a totally different direction. But I think wow. it wouldn't... like. That book cannot go in any direction if I never start. So I think it's just, just uh, like starting with wherever your intention is, intention is when you start. So mm -hmm. if it's like, okay, I want to do a book on how to teach Spanish, like mm -hmm. start with that book. It may transpi um, trans, um, transpire transpire into something mm -hmm. di different, but just start it and it, it goes wherever it goes. And it's meant to go. That's, that's where it's going to go. Dang. She's, see, that's why she's thriving out here in LA, coming from Florida. That's heavy. So I ultimately want to write a book, so that's that's really good feedback. We can move on to the next one. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to talk more about the outline, because no. the outline is key. You break down the chapters, you break down the key points, mm -hmm. table of contents, mm -hmm. all of that with the outline, So that's right? going to get us into step number two, which okay. is to create the first draft of your book. And so once you create the first draft and wherever that story went, Mm -hmm. That's beyond our control. Sometimes the universe just conspires Divine, and makes right. the story happen. Okay. You so what you do with that is you actually send it out to what you what's called your sample readers. So people that you really mm -hmm. trust, who's going to give you honest feedback, not people who are just going to tell you what you want to hear. So people yes, like Mark, you would be one of my people who okay. is going to say, okay, what do you think of 
this first draft of my book is going to, and then let them know that it's a lot of mistakes because it's not edited. Okay. It's just okay. a rough draft so you can get uh, feedback on your book. And then after that, you can work on to the, to the next draft and we go on to 32 when we talk about that. So let me ask you a quick question because now you got my brain working and thinking. How long is, is it, how long will this take? Is this like a, sometimes when I make blueprints for my YouTube videos, it takes me five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the concept. Mm -hmm. Is it depending on the universe, depending on your, your vibration at the time, on your mindset? What does it depend on? How long does it take to do the outline the first draft? How so, long did it take you? Let's ask that question. So it took me a year, but what I mm -hmm. did was I, I stole something from Stephen King with, when I read his book on writing. Mm -hmm. and he says that what he does is he work until, like, he finished the draft, however long that takes. Where does it take three months, a year? He works on it until he has a draft okay. and then what he do is he allow his readers to get it he takes a break from it and work on something else in in, in between mm -hmm. and then he works on it again so what mm -hmm. i did is every three months i would work on work on my book non-stop every day i would set a quota that i had to write every day at a certain time and if i didn't do it at that time i made it up for the next day mm -hmm. and so what i did is i three months i would work 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 stop uh work on something else and not come back to it so I have a fresh approach. Nice. So it took a fresh year all together. Yeah. Fresh perspective. Yeah, so it took Damn. a year all together. So breaks and going. So. Okay, okay, you were on it. You were in tune with the seasons too. You took, mm -hmm. you did three months, broke, and kept going. Okay, nice. What's the step three? Okay, step three is actually to rewrite the second draft and mm -hmm. the third draft. For how many ever drafts you feel like it takes until you get to a point where you're ready to send it to an editor because that's going to be pretty costly if you want mm -hmm. somebody to do it well. Well, I know with me, Grammar is kind of my, I don't like to use the word weakness, but it's not my strongest area. Mm -hmm. So I have to definitely invest into a good editor mm -hmm. to make sure they they dot my T's and Q's and mm -hmm. put my parentheses and parent, right, everything right, right. in the right place. So, Keep everything tight. So work on, a, I, I would say at the least, a third draft of your book and then work on hiring an editor. So get the, get to the get through the first draft, mm -hmm. get the sample, sample readers. Mm -hmm. How many sample readers would you recommend? I would recommend 10 if you can, because nice. the thing with saying 10 is, okay, if okay. only five of those people have time to actually read it in your time frame, and to give them le at least a month or two to actually read it and get feedback, because we're all on different schedules, different schedules and have so, so much going on, so mm -hmm. I would say give them a month, and then 10 people, so if only five of those people actually do it, you're good, so instead uh, if you do so one or two, three people when they don't have time. Okay, you broke it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So what's the second? What's the fourth step? So the fourth step. Is Actually, wait. The third step is to get the editor. I have another question. Can I okay. can I jump mm -hmm. to that one? Okay. So how much is the editing going to cost? Is, is is there something like Amazon can do to edit it? Is it like a virtual assistant that can edit a virtual right. editor? So right. Amazon That's does it. have a program that you can do a package deal where they would do all of the the editing. They would do the cover details, but what I do, I hire a lot of freelancers because I really spread people who are out there on their grind, Hustling. just making a way for themselves. So okay. I use a site called Upwork.com. So what I do is I put the job up mm -hmm. with the details of how many pages it is, how long, like time frame, mm -hmm. and my price range, mm -hmm. and what people can do from all over the world, all over the state, is they can um, apply for it with the rec with the requirements that I ask, mm -hmm. and they can even do a sample if I ask them. And they can count, uh, counter my price and say, okay, this is higher. I need a little bit higher, uh -huh. and I need a little bit lower. So that's what I do when I need an editor. Okay, but they nice. have a lot of websites, too, where you can just uh, submit it if you need it quicker. Mm -hmm. But I think when you do it, a freelance is going to take a little bit of time to interview and make sure people are right for the job. Oh, so. nice. Okay. You're giving a good game. So please continue I, to take notes. Yeah, she's dropping, yeah, she's dropping it. Okay, so then what's step number four? So step number four is to actually send the finish edited version to the copyright office because it's going to take a few months to get your book actually approved through the copyright office and the price is normally 35 to 55 depending on if you had a quotes in your book or if it's just you you're by yourself mm -hmm. um, so it's going to take a few months so what I just do personally me is I just send it to early after the edit is back mm -hmm. and I send the copyright to the government and submit mm -hmm. it to the government mm -hmm. and then so we get to the next step so when you say the government we're talking uh, we're talking like the Library of Congress or, or what, what's the website or what's the government agency or what's the, the information so about the, the government? So the actual website send it to Trump I have or right who here. Send it to <laughs> <laughs> no, not Trump. No, not Donnie. We send it to Donnie. copyright gov. So we send it to copyright.gov. Copyright okay, got you. And so when you send it to them and it's, it's like a simple process of like 
creating an application for Facebook. You just put in your information. Easy, uh, and they really explain to you. You just got to make sure that you have time to pay attention to everything they're asking for. And it's a simple process. Okay. It's not too hard. And Sweet. just upload it if you're going to do it. Um, if you're going to upload it on your computer, make sure you upload the right file. Or if you're going to send it in to them, know the right ad address to send it to. Ah, got you. So they may need like PDF or a Word file right. or something like that. Usually so, PDF. Usually PDF. So let me ask you a question. I always wanted to write a book with motivational quotes. Mm -hmm. In your book, you have a lot of quotes, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, um, a lot of different people. Uh, our brother E.T., right. he goes hard. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, he's hustle, 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 hustle. He's not playing. But I always want to write a book like that, but how does it work with the copywriting? Say I have a bunch of quotes from Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of quotes from Everlicia Taylor. I have a bunch of quotes from amazing people like mm -hmm. that. How, how does it work at the copyright office? Well, I actually had went to a seminar on self-publishing, and they uh, told you that as long as it's under 100 words, that you mm -hmm. just make sure you give them credit and just put it out there in the book. Uh, so that that's just what I do. When you I say 100, 100 words, you mean all the quotes in the whole book that, adds up to 100? No, or that that person quote. So my Angelo quote on my cover, just make mm -hmm. sure that it's under a certain amount of words. words. And that's just what I, I haven't really looked into the the really but the that's specific that's laws my way details. yeah but they approved mm -hmm. the copyright they proved as it. long as they approve uh -huh. so then can you give the plug on the seminar on the seminar or is that it was a uh, publish a book and grow rich if i'm not mistaken publish a book and grow so rich she's, she's growing rich man <laughs> think and grow rich shout out to napoleon right. hill it's one of the highest selling books of all time but and i love the seminar so much that i went back twice so it's called Publish a Book and Grow Rich. Grow rich. Is that in LA? We can, we can hit that so up? So I Problem think they go LA to different groups? cities, but okay. we can put a link. Okay, we can throw a link up. Okay, we can throw a link up. Okay, sweet. So then what's the next step? And so as we get the, the fourth step of the copyright, our next step is to actually find and hire a copyright, I know, a cover designer. Uh -huh. That's the most important. And you, you can't um, hire a person to, to do the cover unless you know how many pages and you're done editing because uh -huh. that tells you how, how wide your spine is going to be. This is thin. But one of my books, my Sunday, June 27, is a little bit thicker. So, so when you get the edit and the final version of it, then you can tell your um, cover design, okay, this is how many, this is the width of the book. And that allows them to d design the whole cover front wow. and back. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, so then, what is, of course, you know, money is a symbol of service. A lot of us make money. I make money off of YouTube. I make money off of giving services. How much tender, how much money do we have to put up for the cover design? We can talk about the whole book in total, the whole mm -hmm. process, but let's start with just the cover design. So I had a best friend who was in school for uh, art school, so he designed my cover, and we just set a price, mm. and it was, well, I think, $75, but that okay. was me, a friend who was just starting out. Mm -hmm. So it could I could range from $50 to 100 or you could do it yourself. Like my younger sister, she's working on a, her poem book, and she's doing the cover herself, so she saved a whole lot of money in that area from zero for her being her own service. But I felt that I wanted to create a certain vision that I couldn't bring my couldn't create myself so I wanted to hire help okay and so what what helps too is sites like Upwork that you can set the price and so this is my budget you can, and whoever's willing to work with you they'll apply for the job and whoever's not they won't wow mm -hmm. this is crazy mm -hmm. you are the books you read the films you watch mm -hmm. the music you listen to the people you meet mm -hmm. the dreams you have the conversations you engage in you are what you take from these this is inspiring. This is motivating me to action. That's another thing that I like about self-help motivation action books. They push you to action. It's not enough to say, oh, this is motivational. It makes right. me feel the sweet inside. Right. Let's get busy. Let's get. Let's make it happen. Let's get like genuine. My mom, her, her mantra every time I tell my mom that I want to do something new is just don't talk about it, be about it. Just, so I feel like that's the essence that I want to share with my books in my life. Like Don't talk about it, be about it. It's going to be harder. It might take more time than you think, but just yeah. actually do it and you're going to find out so much about about, about yourself. Wow, doing it. in the process. Mm -hmm. It was more than helping people, you're actually mm -hmm. helping yourself along the way. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? Really so the next step, I say is triple, 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 triple check the, the sample copy because whether you decide to do print on demand, so printing demand is when they just print your copies as the purchases come in, but if you decide to go with a printer, 
or no, this is the first step to when you actually get the cover design and everything's uh, great with the actual copy, you order a sample copy. And so what I say is triple, 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 triple check your sample copy. Because I made a mistake when my, the first version of my book came out mm -hmm. and I had a typo in my introduction because, um, or I had a few typos. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say triple, triple check as much as you can your, nice. your sample copy because that is the last copy you see before it actually go to print. But it's kind of easier now with print on demand because print on demand you can upload a new version oh, quickly. Gotcha. But when you're ordering what my first run of my book, Diary to, I ordered, ordered 100 copies. So it was 100 copies that all had oh, that same incorrect. type of the first one. Oh, wow. So that's what I'm saying. So triple, triple, triple check. I think as well, I, I read a lot of books, a lot of old school books. Sometimes the word isn't misspelled, but it's the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And so... It, it's not it's not easy to catch it because it's not misspelled. But I think if you have somebody else reading it with a fresh eye, mm -hmm. they can they can catch it. I'm sure there's people that actually get paid to do that to look right. over the sample copies, not just editors, but just you know somebody else that can help as well. Because mm -hmm. that's key. You want to be professional. You want to come on top. I mean, this is a this is a Forbes you know highest hey, paid hey. authors. Hey, hey. So it's like she doesn't play around. She triple checks, it's double amazing. checks. It's, it's coming. Here we go. It's coming. So what's the next step? You so giving? I just want to say thank you. You giving mad game, and you look great doing it. I am um, underdressed compared to I the sister amazing. right now. I She's because you are amazing. I feel amazing. So let me not cut you off. Okay. So step number seven is decide how many copies you want, or whether you're going to do the pre-demand. So this is basically like the step that gears up to you. Whether you did pre-orders, so if you did pre-orders for your website, okay, this is how many books that I need. Mm -hmm. I didn't do pre-orders my mm -hmm. first run, but I wish I would have did it. But it was a learning process, so that's to say, decide if you're going to do pre-orders, and then figure out the time it's going to take for your books to arrive, and calculate any mistakes. Like, mm -hmm. so if your printer one mess up, and you have to send a new copy, mm -hmm. and they're going to need some more days, or the holidays coming up, factor in those things, and decide if you're going to do the prints. And I would say, if you can, actually do a book signing, too, because that allows you to decide how many books you need to, okay, I'm going to do a book signing, this how many people that I expect to come and mm -hmm. they have the books on hand. And it's better to have more books than have uh, not enough books. So so would you recommend, you dropped a lot of jewels, so I have some questions. Would you recommend for the book signing to set up like RSVP on your website so you can know how many people are coming in? Because when you say that you'll know how many books you should print up, how will you know from the from the book signing? Yeah, RSVP. Facebook mm -hmm. has the great program where mm -hmm. it allows people to say, okay, no, yes, yes and maybe. maybe. <laughs> right, right. And I feel like that's perfect. She's dropping I, okay. I didn't really know that my first, like so many things I had to learn after the first book and right. the second book and third book. And I feel that learn how to do creative things. So instead of doing a regular book signing, do mm -hmm. a party, a fiesta, or something mm -hmm. different. A fiesta, fiesta, fiesta party. Like, right. Something different, even if you're a friend, like what I did this year, mm -hmm. I had a dinner. So we had a dinner and oh, everybody yeah, came yeah. and I signed their books at dinner. Right. We did a little boomerang at the oh, dinner table yeah. and it was just more organic and everybody right. had a great conversation and everybody standing around just coming for the signing. Right, and, right, right. It's yeah. a, and you can network, you can meet people. And it was cheaper like for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's smart. That's smart. You don't have to rent a huge space. Yeah. So then let me ask you another question. A good, a good way to learn is from mistakes mm -hmm. or failures. So speaking of the pre-orders, you wish you could have done it differently, and if you if you could have mm -hmm. if you knew what you, if you knew then what you know now, mm -hmm. you would have done the pre-order. Why? Tell us more. So I would have did the pre-order because it would have gave me a better idea on how many books that I needed. Because what happens, and it was a great thing that happened, is mm -hmm. the first hundred that I ordered, the first week I sold out. So I had to Moving wait two units. weeks. I had to wait two weeks uh, to order more because I wasn't doing print on demand then. Uh, I was doing so that was a mistake that I learned about print on demand. So I just did it where I had to order and I had to give my printer a heads up so they couldn't or it was going to charge me two times as much just to make it happen in that time frame. So I had to wait uh, two weeks and then everybody's like, "What's going books? on with the yeah. book?" Uh -huh. uh, okay. So that so that's kind of slowed me down with a lot of stuff because I. Honestly, I just underestimated how well it would do, right. and so the, the book sold out online. Then I wanted to have a a, a signing. I couldn't have a signing because I had no books. So, so we getting game. So yeah. now you're inspiring. <laughs> this is really inspiring because I have some goals for this year. Mm -hmm. I have some lofty goals, some pretty big goals, but I may turn out a book or something like a short, make quick happen, book. Make yeah, just happen. make it happen because you're giving me the blueprint, giving me the game, and giving me a scenario on how to a strategy on how to. Succeed, and that's what we want. We I'll need more success. There you go. She, we got a proofread already. Okay, uh -huh. cool. 
What's the next step? So step number eight is actually decide if you're going to create a e version of your book because it's not the same as a physical version. Electronic version. Because you're not you're not allowed to do well. You can, but doing the page numbers mm. is different because it not, might not be the same with the e book. Mm. So mm. that was a hard step for me because I underestimated the time it would take to do the e book, and I had a lot of what's called. If you look in Darwin Tool, you mm. see I had a lot of these lines mm. and stuff that didn't transfer over well, well into ebook. So I had a lot of interactive okay. lines and stuff. Let me help them out. That didn't transfer well into the ebook, so I had to really change the essence of my book. And it was kind mm. of saddening because I couldn't put a lot of stuff and it mm. didn't transfer over well. well. And it took hours and hours to change the, like the editing yeah, from the e version to the from the physical version Preparation to the e version. To the e -version. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that was the thing that I learned. So e version is number eight. So then let me ask you a question. So would you do if you knew from the front from the jump that you're doing the e book? Because now e book is like huge and audio book too, mm -hmm. which I kind of want to ask you about. I don't know if you have experience with that yet, but um, should you do two drafts or do you have to do two editing copies or do you tell the editor, hey, I want to do a, a a or design guys, hey, I want to do electronic and I'm doing the print. So can we make it work? That's a great question. That's okay. Great question. So it wouldn't even be that difficult, but my mm -hmm. thing is that I had already put the... So when the edited version came back, I started plugging into those lines and mm -hmm. the underlining quotes and different stuff mm -hmm. into the perfect section using my the pages on my MacBook. So mm -hmm. I sh instead of me already just jumping into it, I should just save two versions. The, old, the version that came back from the editor and the version for the ebook. For the ebook, because so it's when, that simple, okay. Because a, a great thing to know too is when you get the book back from the editor, mm -hmm. they're gonna come with question mark. Well, it's like this, for every change they make, and they make so many changes to mm -hmm. mine, mm -hmm. like with little mistakes that I made, is they, you have to approve it. Uh, so there's like a red, all, it's like a red right, question mark. Right, okay, so gotcha. if there are so many mistakes, you have to go through and prove each, each mistake. One. So uh, that, when, it, when, when that you say each mistake, done, you mean like a mistake and a correction, right? A cor yeah, correction so mistake. Okay, got sometimes it. Sometimes they, what they do is they'll change a word. They'll uh, put, instead of insightful, they'll put uh, meaningful. Uh, but if you don't want meaningful, you yeah. just, you say no. no okay, thank it. you, but no. <laughs> so that's sometimes I do. I go through uh, every you. single mistake because... I want it to still have my voice. Your touch, right. Yeah. You see, I'm from the South, I'm a gold T, so I have to, hey, I have to put my touch on, on it. Yeah, I, I love to put that. My touch yeah, on it. But I, I think it. that that keeps it authentic, like just your voice okay. and what you, words that you will use. Okay. Not saying that I, did, I didn't approve everything it did, but mm -hmm. the things that I felt true about, I kept. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Good voice. Good I really love Miss Vivian. It's smooth. So, step number nine is to set the release date. And decide if you want to have signing. We kind of touched on it earlier. Mm -hmm. So just basically set the release date. Mm -hmm. And once you put it out there, you have to work hard to make sure you live up to it. Because oh. another mistake I made from my first book is I said I wanted it out September 2012. And it didn't come out till February 2015. Uh, and it was just, it was mistakes that were my own. And the mistakes of the printing taking mm -hmm. too long. Like uh, the mistakes that were, I found in the book. So I had to send them new versions. So they had to go through every single page again. And so I just learned so much. So you're saying don't release the release date until you know everything is right. set, solid. And that's another, I was just looking in the book. Mm -hmm. Stop talking too much. Yep. That's another that's thing. A chapter yeah, book. that's a chapter <laughs> in the book. So sometimes you got to just keep it under wraps. And I'm reading uh, the biography of Thomas Edison right now. And when he was doing all his inventions, mm -hmm. he never talked about his inventions while they were in process. He kept it quiet, reserved. And then when it was released, when it was perfected, that's when he answered all the questions and he would give wow. the game. But he I was need to just, be more like him. He just grinded. He just worked. Yeah. He would talk to his assistants and uh, you know different people that work with him. But if you ain't on the work on the team, the development team, he he's not bragging about it. He's not talking mm. about it. He just works. So I that's a good that. point. That, Go ahead. I'm gonna actually apply that to my own life. So after you just set the release date, mm -hmm. number ten is the most important step. Okay. Promote the book. Brainstorm ways to promote the book because it means nothing to have a book and nobody ever hears about, about it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got that from Rich Dad Poor Dad when mm -hmm. he talked about. He actually used a scenario of Arthur, who's who's you can be the greatest Arthur mm -hmm. in the world without without being great in sales, selling the book, marketing, and branding the book. You won't, you won't go anywhere. Right. So that is a great thing. And so really, just think about. Uh, Things you can do, and the, the best thing is we have the internet, so you can actually Google how do I promote my book, and you can find a whole array of answers and how mm -hmm. to do it, and just figure out what's in your budget and what you can do and what you can't do, and, there, uh, and if you're really serious about making 
writing a career decide okay i can't do that thing on this book but i'll do it on the next book once this book makes more money because that's mm-hmm. one of the things that i did after thriving to there there were ideas that i had that i wouldn't do but financially i and i just wasn't I didn't have the resources and everything I needed to do it, but I didn't say, okay, I'm never going to do it. I said, okay, I'm going to do it for the next book after this book makes money, and I'm going to invest in the next book. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's a, a lot of times we write ourselves off. We have these big dreams, big ideas, what cars you want to drive, but... G-Wagon. Hey. <laughs> so you can, you, can, you can kind of bookmark it and say, I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get mm-hmm. to that. I'm going to achieve that. Um, and then actually going to do it at your next book, right. so that's fly, that's tight. Yeah. That's a good concept. And another thing I just wanted to touch on step number 10 to promote the book is don't be afraid of doing um, what is called reviews. But with reviews is that you have right, to send right. the reviewers the book three, I think three months before the book actually comes out. And that's what I messed oh. up on every single one of my books because it always takes longer than I expect. expect. Mm. So all three of my books I wasn't able to do the reviews because I just wasn't on the time frame. Right. But that's how they, they always say, I mean, right now I'm working on some real estate moves and they always take longer than you expect. Mm-hmm. So it's like you got to add time on the back end. Right. It just always takes longer. Mm-hmm. So then the reviews, uh, before you get to the reviews, actually, I want to ask you another question. What are some ways to promote the book? Because the so, reviews are one of the ways, right. but yeah. So I smart. feel that the latest re- the creative thing that I came up to put my last book, Sunday, June 27, the romance novel, mm-hmm. is I have what's called 50 States Forever. So it's one book that's going to all 50 states in the United States. And so it's bigger than me because when that person gets their book, of course I want them to read my book and I ask for a review, but they're going to have what's called a library card. So they're mm-hmm. going to have, they put their name, their social media, what they do, their website, and how the people who follow can reach them mm-hmm. and support what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So that, I feel like that was a creative, and it keeps the conversation going about my book mm-hmm. long after release date, which was in June 20. 17. Mm-hmm. So so even now people are still posting about the book because they just got it and it comes with uh, rose petals because the cover has the rose on it okay. and it has a little what is, what is it called the co- book cover so they can take it around and write, um, read it wherever they go. Okay. And then I asked them to send me a picture mm-hmm. and I cut their picture. Uh, it's in Florida right now, so a girl that I know in Florida she has it mm-hmm. and so she, she's going to take a picture with the book mm-hmm. in her favorite place reading and I'm going to cut. Her, the picture that she sends me out into the shape of Florida, and I have this big old poster that's every 50 states cut out into the shape. Oh, and she'll go into the picture. That's tight. Yeah. So, so you'll get it for each state. Right. So your book's gonna be read all over the United all States. All over the United States. That's so tight. 50 states forever. And so when I move in and buy my dream home, I'm gonna have it. And I feel like it's gonna be so historic because you're gonna see the 50 states. And I think I'm gonna actually do it for every book following this. this that, one. Be so tight. people really feel like they're a part of something great. Right, it's a movement, yeah. it's a whole And it, it saves me money because the other option was sending sending the book to one uh, uh, 50 books to all those states so it kind of saved me some money and recycled right. the book right right so okay that's fine man mm-hmm. you're changing the game that's a good way to promote changing it. You the answer, game yeah you answered the new question rules, new tools. You, you, boom hit it out the park okay what you got okay after the release date because mm-hmm. this is the most it's another important um, step step 11 because i feel that after my first book came out i just kind of let it dim, dimmer down and I wasn't willing to continue continuously promote it in different ways because mm-hmm. I didn't want to just keep posting like the same support my book, support right. my book a <laughs> month after. People get like, tired of it. Yeah, it's like, like man, it, it wears on. off so I have right. to think of creative ways to keep promoting it. So what I do is I do some speaking engagements. I've been to City Honors here in LA and I went to my alma mater's in, in Tampa where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And so I, I speak about the book so it kind of keeps the book refreshed. Right. And so that's one of the things just like Figure out ways to keep it going after the release date because you're gonna have that that week or that month that it comes out and it's everything is book 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 right. and then okay how do you keep it going months and months after you still trying to make income off this book so one of them is speak engagement mm-hmm. um, still do giveaways create an okay. email list and then finding stores to have your book in Excellent. it's stuff that you can work on after the book is already out but, and then while the book is about to come out too you can do that nice 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 so, wow. and nice that's again. the gist of it. That was amazing, but now we want to talk about the details, the breakdown of how can we get our thriving tool. And with that comes a workbook. Workbook. The workbook that we're going to have at a discount or free for the... A for free the, for everybody who put in your code. We're going to use... We, all right, see, I'm blessing y'all up. Yeah. 2018, y'all got the code. She about to bless us. We're going to go into a little bit more detail and show you the workbook, 
how you actually get walked through, you work through the book with the workbook. So the workbook is basically all the steps that we shared here, but in much more, more, much detail mm. that, that I could, because I don't want to over talk, talk too much. Okay. So one of the things that we have here is where I actually show them. You can show show the version of when I hire somebody on, um, what's the site called? Upwork. Up, Upwork.com. Mm. And we, can, we can superimpose an image right. too. So when I hire somebody on Upwork.com and I say, okay, this is the cover that I have, I actually send them a mock-up of what, how I want the cover so there's no misunderstanding of the version that they give me. And I just tell them that I just want it much more cleaner than what you send me. And so I feel like that should be your approach to when designing your cover because there's so many people that I see and friends just with different projects of logos. They say, okay, the finished product is not where I want it. But so I feel like when you go in, you say, okay, this is what I want to show a mock-up, you get a better chance of getting what you actually want. Mm. And so that's just one of the things that we share in the workbook. It's just a lot of stuff that goes just a little bit more in detail about prices and how much things, everything take and shortcuts to save you money because I felt that I, I could have saved a little bit more, much more, a little bit more money mm -hmm. publishing my first book if I knew the same things that I knew about my third book. Okay. So just in the workbook, we go to, through all the small details that you really want to know of bringing the physical copy to life bringing it to life bring it to life so action creates reality well imagination precedes reality then action brings it to life let me ask you a question though i got a couple of questions okay. how many pages is the workbook so the workbook should be 14 pages 14 pages yeah, okay 14. got it and then you created this we're going to superimpose it but you created the first one or you had a, a graphic designer create the first design and then you sent the cover to the actual cover creator, or how does it, how did it work? I just, uh, what I did is took stuff from my computer, so I played with the fonts that was on my computer, mm -hmm. and took this rated R symbol, because the mm -hmm. book is rated R. Okay. And I just so put those things together. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I put the little components that I could mm -hmm. onto, just playing around with the, the paint in my on my computer. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're talented. You almost, I mean, this is a refined version, but... Yours looks like the basics of it. That's right. the skeleton of it. Right. Um, how much... So my my subscribers, you, we've met because of YouTube. Right. So, YouTube. She's, so she's giving back. I have a degree in YouTube. YouTube, um, YouTube, YouTube University. Right, YouTube there you go. University. So how much is this typically on the market? Because I know our viewers are going to be getting it for free, but how much is this typically? Well, I haven't decided with the price, but I feel okay. like it's going to good be a good price maybe 1999 because okay. it, it has so much information that could save you time so much and money and it's like you can find out everything that i told you on the internet but i've decided Package to put it. it all and save you time from having to go to 100 articles that i went to to figure out over the last three years of self-publishing my own books so that's the service she's providing is bringing everything together packaging it and delivering it that's why i love books so much it's like a cheat code instead of going to all the websites mm -hmm. you hit up la empresaria la and you empresaria. bam 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 and you just get it so you just, it's all popping so i'm actually like i said i'm inspired to create my own book i don't know which topic i'm going to talk about maybe how to travel how to learn spanish how to invest in your first uh, real estate property how to start a youtube channel there's so many different topics you can write about but um, if you want to write about them, you got to go through the 11 steps that Everlicia Taylor just dropped. Yes, yes, so yes. we're going to post the link. We got the code. What do you want the code to be? Because whatever you just tell me the code will be, I'll put it. Bless up. That's going to have to be the Bless code. Up. Okay, Bless up. Bless up. Gonna I, love it. I love it. Bless it's going to have to be the code. It's going to have to be the code. So uh, 2018, we're coming with more videos. She's going to be back. We're going to get more game from the sister. Yeah. And we want to host and show... Um, her other her other uh, books. Your brother, your friend, your dietitian back again for another installment. La Empresaria. Everlicia La Empresaria. Boss Lady. Mm -hmm. Steps to self-publishing your own self-empowerment, romance, or any type of book. Get the thriving tool. Get the workbook. Bless up. We out here at 80 degrees in L.A. and it's yes, winter time. Yes, in this beautiful city. It's wonderful. Imagine. Okay, y'all. Peace. Magnificent. Magnificent. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It really was amazing, though. Yeah, that was a bomb interview. Yeah. This is going to be in the bloopers, y'all.